Welcome to the channel, I'm Rob, and today we're going to paint a Leviathan Dreadnought. So, if you've been watching my videos so far, or you've been catching up with some of the reels on Instagram, I am doing a project with the Army Painter, um, where I'm creating uh, every single Legion tank and some infantry in uh, the 18 Legion schemes. I did Iron Warriors last week, and uh, I thought I'd do a longer tutorial uh, for an Iron Warriors Leviathan Dreadnought. So we're gonna start off with Maze Yellow, which is a, a speed paint, one of the new speed paints. Uh, kind of the second edition speed paints. Uh, this is straight through the cup over a white primer, really important. It's so much easier if we paint yellow over a white, and this will be our obviously our hazard stripe areas for our model. Uh, and then we're gonna shade it. We want a little bit of contrast uh, within these panels. So we're gonna um, shade it with a warrior skin, nice, uh, nice brown color. We're gonna kind of do a upside down to what we might ex expect um, in terms of the shading, uh, kind of hitting it from above, but it does it makes it quite impactful. Now, you need to gloss your model at this point using your gloss varnish. You could use a rattle can gloss varnish, you could use uh, it through the um, uh, airbrush, and then we need some masking tape. Now, this masking tape uh, is, is really good, really thin. I would probably say it's around 0 0.5 millimeters, so it's quite thin, but it is quite tacky. Now, you've got to be really careful with this. I find that with uh, masking off areas, it's so much easier to do um, if you have a pair of tweezers and uh, also a scalpel or a hobby knife as well. But use the rivets um, to get your uh, hazard stripes lined up. Obviously, I want this wanted the uh, panels to be symmetrical. Um, so it was really integral at this point for me uh, to use the rivets um, in order to help line up. Now, I also want the gaps between each hazard stripe to be uh, exactly the same. So you can see here that I'm almost covering the entire area uh, and then um, taking off the masking tape in between. That's just because I want the yellow stripes to be the same uh, width as the black stripes as well. This is quite a fiddly process um, and this is probably the most time consuming process. Out of the whole process, uh, out of the whole uh, process, because the you know Iron Warrior schemes are not tricky, um, so we can invest a little bit of time in our in our hazard stripes. So we're going to go in with Grim Black here. This is another uh, speed paint. I do apologise about the um, uh, about the focus there. I think it's more picking up the uh, airbrush than it is the actual model. Uh, so this is Grim Black. It's straight through the airbrush. And it goes fine over that gloss varnish as well. Um, and we don't need to highlight it. You can highlight that black if you want to, but I just prefer a straight, a straight up black. Now, what I did do uh, before laying down the black and laying down the um, uh, the stripes though was apply some hairspray. I left that to dry and then applied uh, the hazard stripes. And what you can see here is I'm just spraying it with some water to reactivate the hairspray and then coming in with a hobby knife and then just scratching away at that uh, that black paint, that black speed paint that we put down through the airbrush. And this just lifts the paint up really nicely to simulate scratches and the paint lifting off. And all you need in that scenario is just uh, hairspray, any kind of hairspray will do. And uh, it, it creates this really awesome, wicked, effect now it's really important at this point that we keep it completely random um, and you can see me turning uh, the Leviathan um, whereas I'm keeping the scalpel essentially at the same kind of angle um, and we want scratches to be going in different directions, different types of scratches as well is really critical here. We're now gonna move on to the silver elements. So we need gold green, grim black, and plate me male metal. Um, and we're gonna mix these in a one to one to one ratio. Um, and we're gonna mask off the uh, hazard striping that we've put, just put down. Um, 
that green within the armor uh, just adds a little bit of interest to what could potentially be quite a boring color scheme and then obviously the grim black darkens that plate metal color uh, down as well As we started with a white base coat, it's also really important uh, that we get decent coverage over the entire model. We're gonna go in with our plate mail. Uh, straight up plate mail. We I did thin this and I added a little bit of flow improver as well to this, just to get it through the airbrush. And I thought I'd show you the whole process of the silver here, just so you can see the highlights and where we're aiming. And you can slow this down or copy it but essentially I'm trying to create as much contrast uh, on the model as possible because you know if we were just to do this as straight over silver just one color it wouldn't be very interesting and with a model this size it's really important that we try and make it as interesting as we possibly can now if you feel like you've gone over the top with this very bright silver it's okay because we're going to introduce some uh, contrast with other colors in a moment. You can just see here doing the magnetized uh, magnetized guns. Really recommend if you're doing a Leviathan Dreadnought, just magnetize all the weapon options. Uh, just makes life so much easier. Not easy to paint, but certainly easier to game with. And you can just see me here just going in with those last final highlights, refinements, places where I feel like um, it just needs to be a little brighter just so it's uniform across the entire model. Next up we're going to use High Lord Blue and Warrior Skin. Now you can use Beowulf Blue as well, just a blue um, will be fine uh, from the speed paint range. And I've done this uh, process, slowed it down for you uh, so you can see it in real time where I'm aiming and I'm kind of trying I'm trying to hit the shadows of our model because this is going to be this is going to be the kind of the first layer or the next layer of contrast that we've created so we've created a layer of contrast with that um, that bright silver but now we need to knock it back because it's just it almost looks kind of like a gray knight and it certainly looks like a gray knight leviathan at the moment because we've got that blue tint to that steel armor but we're going to use overlapping colors here so we're going to use a, a blue to lay down our foundation and then we'll use the warrior skin over the top of that blue just to create real depth within those shadows so we're overlapping a, a cold color blue with a warmer color which will be the warrior skin which has got browning and it's got reds in as well i'm not worried too much at all about the um, shoulder pads uh, because i know moving forward that those are going to be black later on um, but you might want to make the shoulder pads uh, shoulder pads black and I just want to show you the guns here as well so like we did with the opposite shading on our hazard stripes that almost upside down shading the same is going to apply to um, our guns here so um, I'm just gonna hit the top of them angling the uh, the weapon away from the airbrush so I'm not catching that top edge and that just creates a really nice effect now we're gonna go in with the warrior skin now I've speeded this bit up because you, you I'm just placing this over any area that's blue because I really don't want to see that blue underneath I want to get rid of it so any area that we hit with blue we're now gonna hit it with that warrior skin so warrior skin is a uh, is a a paint that will come back to time and time again in this particular scheme and I think it's good because it's kind of that it's a it's a really nice rich brown color um, but it's also quite versatile as well so we can use it for exhausts uh, we can use it for smoke effects we can use it for effects like this we can use it for shading yellow so a really versatile paint um, and it's really thin as well it went straight through the airbrush really nicely but you can see now those two overlapping colors that high blue and then the um, uh, 
the warrior skin has created really nice shadows that are way more suitable now for an iron warrior's leviathan and i would say we probably need two thin coats of the warrior skin over that blue the blue is quite powerful so you probably only need one thin coat and then you can see me here just with a a, a, a black by army painter um just thin with a little bit of water and i think that i just use one or two thin coats of this uh just going over any areas that are black you could if you want to mask things off and and highlight it but my preference nowadays is for black just to be black it's i'm using this to break up um the iron elements of the armor um, and that's the function it's performing, just breaking up that solid mass of um, of, of, of metal. So I'm not going to worry too much about the highlights. And you can see I've also done the knee pad as well. Now, this needs an overall, another gloss varnish, because we need to apply our transfers now. Uh, the Forge Royal transfer sheet is really, really nice, and I really recommend getting it for the Iron Warriors. But I'd also recommend it, getting it for any uh, chapter or any Space Marine Legion. Um, because the the quality of the transfers is just excellent, and we apply micro set here. Now, if you've seen any of my previous videos before, it takes you through applying transfers in more detail. But essentially, we use micro set and micro sol. A micro set has number one in, so you know which one to use first. It's the blue one, and then what you can do is just while it's setting with the micro set you can just uh, make small adjustments and small refinements and I'd recommend doing that with a scalpel uh, or a hobby knife to your transfer and then once that's dried and it's quite warm in the UK at the moment, so it's dried relatively quickly. I used Micro Sol, which has the number two on it, it's the red one. And I've just dipped a cotton wool bud into the Micro Sol, and then I'm just very, very gently uh, rolling it over the transfer to make it adhere to, um, uh, to some of the uh, areas. Once that's completely dry, I then used Oak Brown by the Army Painter now I have mixed in a little bit of black in with this and what I'm starting to create is chipping. Now you could if you wanted to chip with just the pure silver uh, but I quite like that negative edge highlighting uh, that's created by using a darker colour over the light silver and certainly um, uh, that kind of dark brown colour that you can create by mixing that oak brown and black together uh, looks really nice over the yellow but that negative kind of edge highlighting just with a sponge and the sponge is quite a versatile tool because we can create scratches with it depending on the direction we push and pull the paint um, but it essentially edge highlights it in a negative way in the opposite way that we would typically understand edge highlighting so a really versatile tool it doesn't make the paint job any less because we haven't edge highlight it uh, but you could always give it a dry brush or an edge highlight uh, before this process if you really, really want to. But I think it's probably unnecessary for the style of paint job that I'm trying to go for and the look and the speed as well that we're trying to achieve with this. I think I painted this Leviathan Dreadnought from start to finish in about three hours. And that included the filming time as well. And that always takes a little bit of time. So we've got some burnt umber oil paint here. Uh, and I've mixed it in with some white spirit. See, I'm using a, a glove as well. I really recommend using a, a glove if you're if you're holding anything to do with white spirits. And we're just going to use this as a filter all over. Now, usually, I would be a bit more circumspect with our oils. However, in this case, with this particular model and with this particular scheme, uh, having that filter over the top of it just adds another layer of weathering, adds another colour to... Um, that kind of gritty colour that we want to create, that dirty colour that we want to create with our Iron Warriors Dreadnought. The idea that they've been in the siege works for a long time, in besieging fortresses. 
but also because we're not pin washing it th this is a really simple process this you know it took three minutes you can see it speeded up and then what i'm going to do is take a cotton wool bud again with some clean white spirit this time and then just clean up areas uh are kind of the bits in between the rivets really but you can see that i'm pulling it down in a direction and that starts our kind of streaking grime process but burnt umber is a really versatile tool for this kind of uh, scheme really nice color because it's kind of got that readiness to it that also grime and rust has now this is the really fun bit we're going to take uh, some neat burnt umber and just mix it in with a little white spirit and we're going to dot it around our model places where we have put that oak brown black mix particularly we're going to dot it in areas as well those the top of the edges where we might expect rain to hit and there to be streaks of rust or grime coming down it's this is just neat oil paint going onto this just with the tiniest little bit of white spirit and you can see i'm going to do it in quarters basically so i'm going to do the first um, the front first, then the side, the back, and then the other side. And I'm using a fan brush here just to drag that pure oil down. And it creates a really nice effect with not that much work either. But the fan brush is a really great tool. I've not been able to find kind of, uh, too many um, uh, paintbrushes that can, can do this effect. This is a a, a great tool to use it's nice and it's a really soft brush this as well so it's perfect for this effect now once you've done that because it's so random the process of creating that streaking some it will go wrong and some areas you might have to be a bit more refined so you can see me going in again here and going well i want to add another streak here or i want that streak to be more powerful or thicker so there is an element of having to go backwards and forwards with this just so you can get it right and that burnt umber works so well on the yellow as well and then i've given it a matte varnish using army painters matte varnish here and then we're nearing the end we've got to create some smoke effects so we're going to use that warrior skin again to create um, some smoke effects kind of heat effects I guess on the gun but I also do this on elements of the Leviathan Dreadnought as well anywhere there's an, an exhaust I would hit, hit it with that warrior warrior skin and I'm going to use grim black just to get the edges so you can still see that warrior skin but just the edge of the gun and you can see me going in with a grim black on any kind of elements of the exhausts or any vents or anything like that you can see i've hit it with the warrior skin previously as well just to add another layer of weathering i think a matte varnish also works really well for this particular scheme usually i tend to use maybe a satin on metallics but it when i had done that it was way too bright it wasn't that kind of grittiness that i wanted and the matte varnish from the army painter also works quite well because it's got this nice sheen to it it's not com it doesn't make metallics completely dull and this is it this is the final dreadnought i've done the base i've added a few grass tufts i've done the lens some glowing lenses we where i've done lots of videos about that previously uh the kind of the vent at the front um i've just uh kind of done it in a very dark copper with a little bit of verdigris and that's it i hope you enjoy the video guys i hope this has been useful I hope it's broken it down into simple steps and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.